What if I told you I knew of a class that was guaranteed to help students raise ACT and SAT scores, develop fine motor skills, strengthen hand-eye coordination, increase verbal IQ levels, improve memory, raise scores in other subjects, increase vocabulary, improve reading skills, work better in teams, and in general, succeed more in life? What if I told you that this class may only require an hour of your time a week? What if I told you this class is already implemented into some schools? What if I told you that children are already instinctively drawn to this class? Would you believe that all of these benefits could be gained simply through music class? Study after study has proven the incredible results of music education. They not only suggest benefits for students while they are taking music lessons, but also that neural changes accompanying music training during childhood are retained in adulthood. According to one study, adults who received formal instruction as children have more robust brainstem responses to sound than peers who never participated in music lessons. Music creates a whole new world. It affects our minds, our imaginations, our lives. Music aids in concentration, memory, and listening skills. It can be its own complex language of scales and chords and intervals, or it can simply be the beautiful arrangement of a single melody. Music has an indescribable effect on people. Its beautiful rhythm, exciting surprises, and complex arrangements can be the keys that open doors to understanding, memory, and learning for any and all who take advantage of it. In ancient Greece, music education was a primary part of the edu educational system. The ancient Greeks would use music as a sort of teach teaching method, as a means of studying mathematics and philosophy. For the Grecians, music was considered fundamental to education. At this time, music included poetry and was intended to influence both body and soul. Michael Mark, professor of music at Townsend University, says that Greek students learned vocal and instrumental music, although instrumental music was limited at this time. Even though the extent of music was limited, it was still considered a vital part of children's education. In the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance era, typically only boys and men of college age had any form of music education. There were not many instruments, and organized music education was relatively non-existent. During the Middle Ages, music was almost inseparable from the church, whether it be learned in the monastery, cathedral, or parish school. Toward the end of Renaissance era and into the Baroque era, more instruments had been invented, and parents started wanting their children to be able to play these instruments. However, this was still not formal music education. It was only for the wealthy and in a private, group, um, a private lesson type setting. Music education has gone through a lot of changes in the modern era. The first music school in America opened in 1717, but it was solely singing classes. It was not until 1832 that uh, music theory was incorporated into music education in America. Today, there is not much of an appreciation for music education in the United States, and there is also not a very clear understanding of what music education is or the benefits it has to offer. Music class is often one of the first things that gets cut when budgets get tight. According to National Public Radio, in just 13 years, the percentage of high poverty schools that had a music program decreased by 19%. This means that there are approximately 2.1 million students being denied solely the opportunity of music education. A lot of Americans are just uninterested in formal music lessons, and they do not care much about them. And sadly, few Americans are truly musically literate. Music education can be defined as formal instruction in vocal or in instrumental music. Lois Chotsky, an expert on the Kodai method, defines music literacy as being able to look at a musical score and think sound, to read and write music as easily as words. Because of its lifelong educational, personal, and spiritual benefits, music education should be a priority for schools. Music education produces academic benefits in multiple subjects, lifelong emotional benefits, and helps prepare us for a life of worship. First, music education produces academic benefits in multiple subjects. One example of this is the direct relationship between music and mathematics. Lynn Kleiner, founder and director of Music Rhapsody Music Training School says, music and math are highly intertwined. By understanding beat, rhythm, and scales, children are learning how to divide and create fractions and recognize patterns. Scales and chords show intervals and patterns. In a way, music is its own form of math which helps the students better understand whatever math course they may be taking. But the connection between music education and other subjects is not just seen in mathematics. Music education helps raise students' grades in other classes, such as literature and history, and it enhances their listening skills. 
These skills will be helpful throughout the student's life. According to D.L. Strait of the University of Maryland College Park and Ann Krause, professor at Northwestern University, everyday listening skills are stronger in musically trained children than those without music training. Significantly, listening skills are closely tied to the ability to perceive speech in a noisy background, pay attention, and keep sounds in memory. Music tra musically trained students have a head start on their non-musically educated classmates because their memory has been strengthened, their minds are more focused, and they can ignore background noises more easily. This is useful in multiple subjects, including literature, history, math, and many more. According to a study from Nature Neuroscience, students in high quality school music education programs score higher on standardized tests compared to students with, in schools with deficient music education programs. Because of the skills they are learning through music, children who are musically educated can pay attention, listen, and perform better on assessments and standardized tests than children who are not. Music education has the same effects as learning a new language because music is its own language. Kent State University released a study that says, when students learn music, it strengthens the area of the brain used for processing languages, making it better able to hang handle language processing tasks. The American Council of Teaching of Foreign Languages says, people who speak more than one language have improved memory, problem solving and critical thinking skills, enhanced concentration, ability to multitask, and better listening skills. These skills are very similar to the ones seen in those who are musically educated, and they will benefit the student throughout their lives. Secondly, music education produces lifelong personal benefits. One example is the calming yet energizing feeling that music education creates. Music education requires one to sing or play in group settings, whether that be in a performance or in a classroom. Stacy Horn, founder of the social network Echo, says, as the popularity of group singing grows, science has been hard at work at trying to explain why it has such a calming yet energizing effect on people. What researchers are beginning to discover is that singing is like an infusion of the perfect tranquilizer, the kind that both soothes your nerves and elevates your spirits. Music mentally calms a person and also makes him or her happier. Horn also says, study after study has found that singing relieves anxiety and contributes to quality of life. Music education accustoms the students to singing in groups. And because of musically educated people are more likely to continue their involvement with music, they are more likely to enjoy these benefits throughout their lives. In addition, music education produces feelings of unity and trust. According to Horn, music education produces oxytocin. She says, oxytocin also enhances feelings of trust and bonding, which may explain why still more studies have found that singing lessens feelings of depression and loneliness. Music education produces confidence in a student's life. Kent State University's study says, creating music together helps groups feel more positively about themselves and their group members, enhancing a sense of safety and improving overall mood. Singing with others releases different hormones that create a sense of unity, protection, and joy that almost nothing else can give. The benefits of becoming musically literate and having the opportunity to sing in groups is something that people can enjoy throughout their entire lives. So how do the effects of music education differ from the effects of listening to or enjoying music? The biggest difference would be in the level of knowledge and interactivity. During music education, the student is the one making the music, while an individual listening to music has nothing to do with the music he or she is listening to. In order to create music, a more personal connection is required. In music education, students reap the benefits of their own labor and thus can learn and develop more through the situation. Sharon Bryant paraphrases Dr. Nina Krause's words and says, in order to fully reap the benefits of a music class, kids can't just sit there and let the sound of music wash over them. They have to be actively engaged in music and participate in the class. While listening to music may give one similar emotions to playing an instrument or singing a song, a listener does not have the same sense of pride and accomplishment that a student partaking in music education has. Lastly, music education helps prepare us for a life of worship. As stated previously, music education helps create confidence. When people feel confident in their singing voice or instrument playing, they are more likely to perform in front of others. Often people, especially young people, do not sing in worship because they are not confident. But singing and making music to the Lord is commanded of Christians in scripture. Therefore, believers should be joyful in fulfilling this task. Tom Olson, campus pastor at the Orchard Evangelical Free Church in Barrington, Illinois says, when you sing, you are spiritually strengthened for trial. Paul and Silas sang praises to God during their time of trial in Acts for encouragement and strength. Music gives us strength to overcome trials. 
Psalm 59, 16 says, But I will string, sing of your strength. I will sing aloud of your steadfast love in the morning. For you have been to me a fortress in, the refuge, in refuge in the day of my distress. Believer strength comes from the Lord, and singing and making music to the Lord strengthens Christians to do God's will. With the skills and knowledge gained through music education, the joy of singing is increased. God intentionally designed music to be this way. Olson says, when you sing, you walk a God-designed pathway to joy. James 5.13 reminds Christians that they are supposed to sing when they are joyful. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Psalm 5.11 says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Singing brings one joy and uplifts their soul. Cassandra Shepherd, a passionate community development worker, says, when you sing, musical vibrations move through you, alternating your physical and emotional state. Singing really is one of the most uplifting, therapeutic things we can do. Singing and making music to the Lord is something Christians can carry with them throughout their lives. Music education gives them confidence to sing with joy and thankfulness to God. The Bible also makes it clear that singing glorifies the Lord. Psalm 147.1 says, Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for it is pleasant, and a song of praise is fitting. God is pleased when believers sing their praises to him. Paul tells the church at Ephesus to be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Christians are called to glorify God with their singing and playing of instruments. Music education sharpens kingdom builders through robust worship and enhances skills to serve the body of Christ better. It is beneficial to an individual, individual spiritually and personally. Some people may argue that most of these benefits result from conditions unrelated to music education. For example, a musically educated student may have scored higher on a standardized test than his non-musically educated classmate simply because he was taking a higher math course than that classmate. While this may be true in some cases, it is certainly not true in all. An extensive study done by the University of British Columbia in Canada took into account any non-related reasons that could have caused musically educated students to perform better than non-musically educated classmates. The research team corrected for these factors in their data analysis, and they still found a clear effect of music lessons on academic performance. These amazing benefits clearly come from music education. Another objection to music education is that there are other ways that schools can spend their time and money from their tight budgets that are more essential than music education. But what is more essential than singing praises to God and bettering a student for the rest of his or her life? The study from Kent State University says, Unfortunately, in the push to ready children for careers that depend on knowledge of these fields, meaning social studies and science, many school districts have cut the key that could hold the, the field that could hold the key to them all, music. Music could hold the key to all other fields of study, and it's not even time consuming. Mrs. Diamond, who teaches music to K-5 through 5th graders at Evangel, says that a student can make strides towards music literacy with as little time as 20 minutes two times a week for younger students and 30 minutes two times a week for older students. Music education sets a student up for success in all classes, personally benefits them, and helps them to worship in a way that is pleasing to the Lord. It creates confidence in young men and women to become soldiers in Christ's army, to sing their Creator's praises, and to glorify Him. Here at Evangel, Mrs. Diamond uses the Kodai method to teach music literacy. Zoltan Kodai was from Hungary and was active mainly during the 20th century. He is a collector of folk songs, a famous composer, and a music educator. Even though he was among the musically elite, he believed everyone should be educated in music. The Kodai method is based off his, of his ideas and uses hand motions and movements to help students with rhythm and beat. It combines all of that with singing to help students stay on pitch and keep the beat. Many observers, myself included, have noticed a difference in Evangel's students' musical skills since Mrs. Diamond began teaching them music literacy. The students, even at a young age, are able to keep tempo and stay in tune. The Kodai method has proven to be a very effective way of teaching these amazing skills. According to a study done by Art Music Academy, children who study a musical instrument are more likely to excel in all of their studies, work better in teams, have enhanced critical thinking skills, stay in school, and pursue further education. The benefits of music education do not stop with high school. Students who are musically educated are more likely to go further in life. Because music education helps with building confidence, forming social bonds, and lifting emotions, it should be a priority for schools. Music education is such a vital part of children's educations. Parents and teachers must work together to implement music education into all children's education for their benefit. Thank you.
Thank you, Kate. Do you believe that secular music can, can or might have a negative effect on someone's development? Yes. So, um, as believers, we should look for um, truth and beauty and goodness in everything that we do. And secular music, um, I'm not saying all secular music is bad, but a lot of it has um, just a lot of things that we should not be focusing on, that we should not, um, you know, the Bible says to pursue goodness and justice and to dwell on those things. And so secular, a lot of secular music would um, take away from the benefits. God's not going to bless us if we are pursuing things that are not biblical. Can a person who is self-taught have the same benefits as those who are taught music in a class environment? So I did a little bit of research on that because um, I, I don't know if any of y'all know Cameron. He's um, one of the seniors, and he's um, very, very musically talented, and he's done a lot of teaching himself. Um, so he was asking me about that. And one thing that I was thinking about was music theory. And it, music theory is important. It helps children become independent of their teacher. It helps children communicate with the composer and the composer communicate with them. It helps children gain confidence in their abilities and understand how music works. Um, and it, it actually helps children improve critical reasoning skills. And so it's foundational for um, well-rounded mus well musicians. So uh, music theory is something that is taught to you. And I think that's very important. What's your favorite song of all time, and why is it your favorite? <laughs> um, you know, I don't really know. <laughs> I've had, you know, on things that people ask me that, I just never really know what my favorite song is. There's a lot of good music out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you choose your topic? Um, so I took piano lessons for, for 10 years, and... Um, I definitely enjoy playing the piano, and I remember at one point during my um, time from taking lessons, our piano teacher sent an email to my mom with an article in it that talks about how music education physically alters your brain, um, and I was like really interested in that, and so I wanted to do, do a little bit more research on that, and that's where my thesis came from. Because of the many benefits of music education you outlined, do you believe it should be mandated in public and or private education? Um, I definitely think it should be way more heavily, heavily incorporated. Um, and I think, um, especially at a young age, it's very, very important. And um, I think just all the benefits should encourage us and to pursue excellence in music. Should churches step in and educate students in music or should it be left up to the schools? Um, well, I, I think it depends a little bit on, well, churches have things like choirs and stuff, so I don't, I, I guess, for a church to step in and tell a school what to do. I don't, churches don't really have power over public schools so I don't think I can say anything about whether they should or not be able to do that because they don't. But um, for a private school like Evangel has say in what ECCS does, I think that is important for them to um, encourage this kind of behavior. What about non-Christian schools that don't focus on singing to the glory of God or on singing hymns? Well, that's a whole different thing because non-Christian schools don't focus on these things that I'm talking about, the pursuit of excellence and um, dwelling on the things of the Lord. How has your, your music education impacted you? Um, so it's a little bit hard to say because I don't know what I would have been like without my music education, but as far as the emotional benefits and the spiritual benefits, it's definitely, for me to be able to sit down and play the piano, um, it brings me joy and you, I like to be able to worship in that way. And I also sometimes, I sing in our church's choir, and that's definitely a huge blessing, so. Thank you, Kate. 